growths. We see a lot of growths on the skin. And here's probably the most common lesion we'll see. And it's not a mole. It's kind of hard. It's brown on the outside, a little light in the center. And you'll find it very commonly on the lower legs, on the sides, or in the front, or in the back of women. Yeah, that's probably what you have. Behind my knee. <laughs> yes, right there. Um, and they're benign. They're nothing to worry about. They don't turn into cancer. They're called the dermatofibromas, dermatofibroma. And we cut them out. I just had a friend, actually, that came in, and she didn't want hers on the side. What happens is you keep shaving it. You just bleed. Yeah. You know, keep shaving it, it bleeds, shave it, it yeah. bleeds. So you just have to either, you have to just, you know, numb it up. We cut a little football around it, sew it up, done. You know, so get rid of it. But again, a very common, very benign lesion. Here's also a super, super common uh, benign lesion, uh, which occurs on the trunk, face, arms. Um, you get more and more as you get younger and younger. More and more as you get younger and younger. Mom and dad are usually the cause. They give you the genetics to make these. And we either freeze them off or we shave them off. They call this seborrheic keratosis. Basically an oil, warty growth on the skin. And they look like moles, they look like brown moles on the skin, but they look like they're stuck on. They look like they're a little tab kind of stuck on the skin, as opposed to a mole, which is more whooshy. You get whooshes around. These are kind of very, very, very dry. They don't, they don't whoosh around. They're not gelatinous uh, like a mole. And they're also very, very common. Um, and we see those very common when we treat that here in the office. Here's your classic mole, right? You see a little hair coming out of it, growing out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some people don't do that. And uh, Michelle uh, or Blair would do uh, laser hair removal and get that hair out of there uh, on top of the mole. Or, <laughs> the mole or just, the you can just cut the mole out. That's what we say. If you want to get rid of the hair and the mole, you can see it's hanging over here. It's even a shadow. It's so big. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can just go right along this line here. Cut it out. A little oval. We sew it up. It looks beautiful. You know, we put stitches underneath to keep, keep a hold on it, stitches on top, done. Skin tags. Oh. <laughs> Almost everybody eventually will get a skin tag in their life, either in their armpit, in their thighs, or on their neck. Areas of friction, areas where there's a lot of heat, you know, you're going to get these skin tags. Um, as you see over here in this, I mean, obviously they show you always the extreme case over here, but uh, you see the person is a, is a bit on the heavier side. So the more the more corpulent, the more uh, good foods we have at uh, good restaurants, the more chances you're going to get these as well. Um, syringomas, relatively common. These are little clear, little bumps under the skin. More common than you see in women. More common around the eyelid. More the lower eyelid than the upper eyelid. And they're easy to just little cauterize a little bit. Or, again, I said there's a different laser that we have, which is a CO2 resurfacing laser, which is a laser that basically peels off the skin, and the skin grows back tight, wrinkle-free, uh, acne scar-free. It's used for, for irregularities in the skin surface. But you have to be off work for like a week because it takes a while for this to heal up. It's basically a vaporization of the skin. We wipe out all the lesions, and then it's red, it's a bit weepy heals over the course of a week. It's a big deal. Cysts, also very common. You see this one's pretty inflamed. There's a lot of swelling. Um, so that, And you can also tell by that little pore. See a little pore right there, that little depression? It starts from any of one of these little pores over here that gets blocked. As soon as the pore gets blocked, that little black, blackhead, it continues to produce sebum, 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 and grow, and grow, and grow. Kind of like a helium balloon. Uh, under the skin. And these also necessitate one thing, excision. I see so many cases where um, a friend of the family or the person themselves will kind of lance it, drain it, and then it's going to grow back, grows right back. They lance it, drain it, and then it grows right back. Or um, some people don't get the whole wall out and they scrape or they cauterize inside and then sooner or later, you know, a year, year and a half passes and it grows right back. You have to get the whole capsule. There's a whole capsule that emanates from that one pore, and you have to do a proper job of getting the whole capsule out, putting the stitches on underneath and on top, and we're done. See that little protrusion out of the skin over here, right there in the lower back? So that's called a lipoma, and that's just natural excess fat. There are genetic diseases where people make a lot of these lipomas all over the arms and legs. Some people just get it. For example, we saw a patient yesterday. Uh, he has three in his scalp. You know, and he wants to get rid of them because they're getting too too large and he wears his hair really really close, shapes really thin, kind of a crew cut all the time and they've gotten too protuberant. So um, these are also amenable to either excision 
Or nowadays, what's new is we are we are finding we can have solutions that we can inject in there to melt away the fat. There are also lasers that have come out that you put over the skin and have a combination of ultrasounds and, and heat effect that also melt away the fat. They're not FDA, FDA approved yet, okay? They're not yet FDA approved, but they're coming out. We have what's called, you'll hear about laser lipolysis, using lasers to lyse, to break down the lipo, the fat, laser lipolysis. And then we have also, I've used some um, solutions uh, to inject in here people who can't tolerate a surgery. Some people are on blood thinners, you know, or they have uh, clotting factor deficiencies and they're not a candidate for surgery. They're going to bleed and bleed and bleed. You can inject something in there and at least shrink it a lot so it's not as, not as evident. Questions? Uh, this is a keloid and you see it's all classically on the, on the earlobe, which is a collection of excess collagen, excess scar tissue. You know, we, we prefer to have our collagen injected into our folds and our furrows and our wrinkles. And here somebody has the fortune of having one ooh, right behind the earlobe over there. And that's because the patient is predisposed. Usually patients of uh, Hispanic, uh, African, African-American origin uh, will develop these, Asian origin, will develop a hypersensitivity to getting any kind of trauma to the skin. Well, they're over scarred. They're going to scar too exuberantly. They're going to scar too much. So. What happens here is that she got an ear piercing. They, the, the, yeah, the ear piercing popped out, and then a couple months later, this whole hard, it's really, really hard, it's a really hard nodule group. It's not like a soft little depressible kind of thing like a, like a lipoma or a cyst or something. This is really super hard. So what we have to do is either we inject them with steroids and try and flatten them out, but when they're this big, usually we, what we do is we cut a little flap of skin, edge it out, I just did this a couple weeks ago, and um, cut it out and then put the flap down and then put in a pressure earring across here, a lot of pressure so it doesn't grow back. Sometimes what I've done recently also this past year because it's so frustrating and they grow back so much and you really want to help the patient is I'll send them to Highline for uh, radiation. As soon as we cut it out, um, before it has a chance to grow back, they go for three to five sessions of radiation. They get targeted radiation in the area, and then it doesn't grow back. It stuns the, tum the tumor. So we're treating it as if it's a tumor and you get radiation, just like it's a breast cancer or a kidney cancer or something like that. You get radiation um, right to the site, and then they stay away. 